Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, we're here again today with Dr. Liz Lister, one of our favorite contributors. And uh, what are we going to talk about today, John? Well, uh, I have a question for Dr. Liz. Why am I always the question guy? Because is it because you... I'm is it because I'm more intelligent or more inquisitive? Or well, because Art, you don't know what the hell you're doing. What is it? What's the reason? I I've, I've been told to help build your confidence by allowing you to ask questions and not just react. Oh, that's what it is. Right. Forgive. Liz, forgive us. We do this all the time. Uh, but we were, I was talking with my wife about hormones recently and hot flashes. Now, I would venture to say that if you've been married and you're over 50, uh, male, female, you know what a hot flash is, you know. But my yeah. question is, do they mean anything else? Is it just part of menopause? It's just mm. the, the change. You're going to have hot flashes. Everybody's expecting them. Um, and you deal with them, or are hot flashes a symptom of something worse? Oh, great question. Essentially, hot flashes and night sweats are the most commonly known symptoms that women have when they're going through the change, right? When they're going into menopause, they're going through the transition. Uh, women who have surgery and go into sudden onset of the, what we call surgical menopause can really get these symptoms pretty severely, right? So it's got that, that, that temperature, that heat fluctuation. Uh, it can happen any time of day. It can also happen during the night. And that is actually generating from the brain. People think of it as the ovaries are fluctuating, which they are. They're going up and down in their function and their ability to produce hormones as women approach menopause. However, the hot flash itself is actually coming from the temperature regulating part of the brain. Wow, that's interesting. Okay? Yeah, it's pretty interesting. And that is why the sleep can get so disrupted. So women will report waking up and then a few seconds later, they'll feel the flash or the sweat come over them. Yeah. So that's a very common way that, that people describe that. So mostly it's a normal part of the process. However, to your question, there is some data that shows that when women have those symptoms more severely and more hot flashes and night sweats, that they may have an increased risk of cardiovascular problems blood pressure, high blood pressure, or other increased risk of stroke, that type of thing. Right. So, a, a general, so it's, a general it's really worth addressing. A general practitioner, uh, let's say particularly a, a male, uh, although everybody is a doctor, you know, so they, they're so, sort of supposed to be aware of these things, uh, how would they probably treat it differently and not as effectively as, uh, uh, well, I, I know that you address this in your mm. practice, uh, how does a general practitioner versus somebody who's a specialist in uh, hormone therapy uh, uh, take a look at it? Okay. The important point is that they be uh, th these symptoms be addressed by a doctor who is aware of the data that supports the safety of the hormones to uh, help people feel better and help clear up these symptoms. The OB, the American College of OBGYN, the uh, North American Menopause Society have slowly over the last few years come around to realizing the benefits of hormones, not just to clear up symptoms, but to help women with their health. Okay, they, they started out just saying, okay, just take care of the symptoms and then pull them off of their hormones as soon as possible. But now they're starting to realize there are actually benefits in the long run Right, which makes sense. There could be cardiovascular benefits in the long run, uh, which goes along with if you treat the symptoms, then you're going to reduce those risks. Well, that, that makes sense because general health means that our body, all the 
complicated systems within our body are balancing each other out uh, and working together. Exactly. Uh, exactly. And, and so balancing your hormones would make sense if you can find the balance to to um, subsume to reduce the hot flashes. You're putting things back in balance, and that would make sense. But exactly. there, so the the increased or maybe an extreme uh, number of hot flashes would indicate, not necessarily guarantee, I assume, uh, some cardiovascular problems because I, correct me if I'm wrong, but the the heat is your blood rushing through. Is that not what causes the heat of the hot flash? Yes. Okay. So again, like we said, the brain's actually generating this little fluctuation in temperature. And then it's, it, that's exactly right. It's causing when women turn beet red, when they're having one of these episodes, that's all the blood vessels dilating in the, at the level of the skin. Right. Okay. And so that is part of it. So that's exactly what the idea is. We don't exactly know, but that's the theory that it has to do with the functioning of the blood vessels throughout the whole body. Yeah. And that's why, of course, uh, anybody going through uh, menopause and men going through uh, low testosterone changes really need to see a physician so that they can have this regulated properly um, and see if maybe there's some other other cause or if there's some negative effect of the uh, of the hormone replacement. And if, exactly. Uh, uh, if they go to your site, you can. Uh, you have a lot more information on this, do you not? I have a ton, especially on the blog page. Yep. So www.drliz. Ah, oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Drlizmd.com uh, forward slash blog. It's got all kinds. Of, I, I just love putting that information out there and uh, correcting, dispelling myths, and correcting all the misinformation and fear that's out there. Uh, so that people can replenish hormones and actually feel good. Well, we appreciate it. Great information. Thank you. You're welcome. We're going to actually let Liz have the last word. She's going to say goodbye. John, I'm going to be quiet after I finish, and you be quiet. And Liz, would you say goodbye to our audience? Goodbye to everybody. Thanks for being here. We'll see you soon. For more on Celebrating Act 2, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.